Hello, all you big, beautiful brains out there. Today, we're going to talk about drive theory of motivation. Before we get started, take a minute to subscribe to Psy vs. Psy. Help out your friendly neighborhood psychologist while I tell you all about drive theory of motivation. To understand drive theory, sometimes also called drive reduction theory, you have to first understand one key concept, homeostasis. Homeostasis is a consistent internal physical state. Our bodies do really impressive things for us each day. Things like regulating our temperatures or making sure our fluid balances are okay. This stability that our body gives us is the way that we function at our best. We need the stability of homeostasis to be able to function at our best and survive. Drive theory states that our motivation to do a behavior comes from wanting to keep our bodies at homeostasis. So say we cross out of that homeostasis boundary on calorie consumption or our blood sugar starts getting low. We get hungry. We're motivated to eat so that our body returns to homeostasis. Drive theory was first developed by Clark Hull in the 1940s, and Hull thought that our drives could be sorted into two big categories, primary drives, which are biological needs, things like thirst or shelter, and secondary drives, which indirectly support our biological needs. A great example of a secondary drive would be your motivation to make money so you can pay for things like food and rent. When looked at through this biological lens, drive theory makes a lot of sense, but it has one major criticism. Sometimes we do things that don't necessarily support our biological need to get back to homeostasis. For instance, sometimes we eat or drink when we aren't hungry or thirsty. Eating when you're already full would actually drive you further away from homeostasis. If you're hungry for more psychology in the world around you, make sure you subscribe to Psy vs. Psy so you can get all of our other videos and you can learn all about the science of psychology. Until next time, keep thinking, and I'll see y'all later. Bye! I think I might have a homeostasis directly related to gummy bears. If I don't eat a certain amount of gummy bears, then I don't know what's going to happen.